What's going on guys, it's Mr. Hunter here with your first grade history. Um, today we are going to be on page, and you see it right behind me, 92 to 97. Uh, we are going to be talking about three different countries and we are going to the continent of Asia. So I need you to get your history books if you don't know what your history book looks like. Hopefully I can remind you that we haven't been in school for a while, but that's it right there, My America and My World. All right, so page 92 is what you're going to be on. Um, the past few days, we've been talking about different countries. We talked about Kenya. We talked about Egypt and the pyramids. Hopefully you got a chance to watch the videos. Um, today, we're going to be going to Asia. Asia is a continent, all right? How many continents do we have? Do we know? You might be able to see there's a little hint behind me. Asia, Africa, what do we have? South America, North America, Australia, Europe, and Antarctica. There are seven continents. What we talked about yesterday with Kenya and Egypt were countries. Countries are smaller, but they are inside of a continent. So today we're going to the continent of Asia and we're gonna talk about Israel, we're gonna talk about India, and we're gonna talk about China. China is a really, 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 really big place. And we're going to tell you a lot of information about that. But first, we're going to start in Israel. All right, so get your books, turn to page 92. And I have my book here, so we're going to be walking through it together. Okay, so I have my notes as well. At the top of the book or the top of the page, you're going to see a few vocabulary words. And I want you to read them slowly. You see the syllables in there. Bethlehem. Everybody say Bethlehem. Everybody say Galilee. Everybody say disciples. Then let's say Jerusalem. And then we can say crucified. All right. Now, those are really, really uh, words that we, um, I say really familiar words that we've heard before. And why? Well, Israel is the home and the birthplace of Jesus. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But I want you to listen closely as I, as I go over some notes first. Okay. So Israel is a place where, where the children of God were located, all right? And Moses, everybody remember Moses? Moses was the one that was chosen to lead his people from Israel or to the promised land, which was in Israel. David, remember David? David and Goliath? He killed the giant, Goliath. He is actually a king who became the king of Israel. And these were all special people. Uh, they were called God's people, all right? There's a lot of special people that were living in Israel. Let's talk about it, all right? Now, we were in Egypt yesterday. It says in the beginning, we can take a bus from Egypt to Israel. Wow, that's pretty cool. We could take a bus. We could take a car. We can visit the town of Bethlehem where Jesus was born. And we can see the hillsides outside of Bethlehem where even today the shepherds watch sheep. So even today they have people that are watching the sheep just like David did when he was a young shepherd boy. Jesus, as a little man, as a little boy and a young man, he walked on the water of the Sea of Galilee. That's one of the special places we're talking about. His disciples caught many fish from the sea. And you know what? If we were to visit there, maybe we could catch some fish for lunch to eat and we could cook them and do things special. But that was a special place. Sea of Galilee is most famous for Jesus walking on the water there and his disciples were fishing. Now, we're going from the Sea of Galilee into a place that is called the Dead Sea. Now, there's no new reason to be scared of the Dead Sea, but the Dead Sea is the reason, uh, there's a reason why it's called the Dead Sea, and we're going to find out here. It says the Dead Sea is really beautiful. It's very easy to float in the salt water. So it's called the Dead Sea, but it's really beautiful. How is that? Well, maybe I'll show you a video in the bottom of this clip, uh, the YouTube video, to show you why the Dead Sea is what it is. So when you're looking at the Dead Sea, and you'll see a video here, the Dead Sea, the reason why it's called the Dead Sea is it, it's a place where they have a lot of water and more water comes into the Dead Sea. But guess what? They don't have anywhere for the water to go. So all the seas come and just pour into the Dead Sea and so much salt gets into that water that if fish and animals were in there, they would die because they can't live. There's just so much salt. Even if you were to get in the water, you would just be able to float. You wouldn't even have to do anything. You know, sometimes how you go to the pool or to the beach and you want to try to float on your own? The Dead Sea, there's so much salt, the water would just keep you up. And that would kill all the fish and any animals that were living in it. So it's not a place that you would actually want to uh, be if you were an animal. But they have also so much water that they have beautiful farmland in Israel. Okay? I'm going to actually read this. The Israelites or Isra Israelis have learned to make crops that grow in desert places. Remember that in Egypt, there's a desert, but they found ways to make crops grow. Well, the same thing happens in Israel. 
It is very dry. It hardly ever rains, but they have designed something and it's called the irrigation system. The irrigation system brings water to the fields in pipes, okay? The pipes bring the water and they carry it so it helps the cotton grow, it helps the fruit grow, things like olives, oranges, grapefruit, kiwi, grapes, and tomatoes. I could just keep saying those things on and on because they all sound delicious to me. So those are really, really, really beautiful things that the Israelis have learned how to do to make sure that they can actually thrive because you can't live without food. Now, I have a question for you before we move on. What is the name of the largest continent, all right, where Israel is located? Because we mentioned the continents, but we're talking about a country. And the largest of all these continents is, is it Africa? Mm, no, it's not Africa. North America, where we live? No. Is it Europe? No. Some of you might be yelling the answer all right, already to me. The answer is Asia. Asia is the largest continent, and that's actually where, where Israel is located. You can actually drive there, all right, from, from Egypt. Now, there's a beautiful sea in Israel, but it has a lot of salt. What is that sea called? The Dead Sea. That is absolutely correct, the Dead Sea. So you cannot, you cannot uh, swim in that water because you would just float, and fish cannot be in that water either. Now, on which sea did Jesus walk? He lived on water. Did he walk on the Dead Sea or the Sea of Galilee? I might have given you a hint because I already told you about the Dead Sea, but the Sea of Galilee is correct. And then the Israelis, how do they get their food? How do they get their water? Or I'm sorry, how, how are they able to grow their food? They have to get their water, but what is the system that is called to help them get their water? The irrigation system, all right? If you guess that, it's pretty good. It brings waters. It brings a lot of water in pipes. The pipes bring the water to the crops and to the fields and they're able to grow it. And if they weren't able to do that, they would not be able to have any food and that would be pretty bad for them living in a desert area. All right. Now I have a question and it says, think about it. So we have to think about it. So you put your finger like this, you put it on your head and you think you got on your thinking cap. All right. It says, why do you think the Dead Sea is called that name? Hmm. It's called the Dead Sea because if you put anything that was living, like a fish, it would die because the water is so salty. Do you guys agree? I think we're on the same page. All right, good job, good job. All right, let's look at the next page. Jerusalem is the most important city in Israel. It is one of the oldest cities in the world, and the shepherd boy David ruled here as king for many years. Later, Jesus was taken outside the city and crucified because many did not believe in it, right? Three days later, he arose from the dead. Today, when we visit Jerusalem, we can see old buildings and walls that have been here since the Bible times. It's an old city, guys. And we can also see the modern buildings that look just like the buildings in the United States. So they have a mixture of buildings that were old, like in the Bible, and a mixture of buildings that look just like here in Los Angeles. It's pretty cool, all right? Now, the children, just because they live in Israel and it's not America, do you think they do different things than us? No, they dress as we do. They go to school like ours as well. And guess what? They even go to school on Saturday. So we should be thankful that we don't have to go to school on Saturday. Their favorite sport is called football, all right? And then they eat some of the same foods. They have their dinner, which is different than us. They have their main course, like their big dinner. They have it at lunchtime, so it's actually at noon. Then for the rest of the day, they eat little foods. But at noon, at around 12 o'clock, they actually eat their main meal. It's the biggest meal of the day. They eat that every day. And then Jerusalem. It has a special name. In LA, we call Los Angeles the City of Angels. In Jerusalem, it's called the City of Gold, all right? And there's one, one other cool fact, if you wanna see here, right here. The cell phone. If you don't have a cell phone, that's okay. You're too young, you don't need a cell phone. But Mr. Hunter has a cell phone. The cell phone was actually this uh, developed in Israel. They were the first people to think about designing a cell phone, all right? And a lot of people over there, they study to be doctors, they help build computers, and then they do farming. And one thing that's really big in Israel, Israel is not the biggest uh, country, but they help other countries. So they have a giving heart in, inside their spirit. So it's really amazing, all right? If you wanna learn how to say something, I'll teach you how to say hello and goodbye. The word is shalom, all right? I'm gonna write it on the board right above Israel. It's this. Shalom. That means hello and goodbye. So I said shalom when we started, shalom. And now I'm saying goodbye, shalom. That was Israel. All right, you should turn your page. We're gonna go to a different country. It's called India, all right? Everybody say India, India. 
And we'll talk about that a little bit more. I have all your information for you. All right, are you guys ready? You're on page 94. Let's look at our vocabulary words. Our vocabulary word at the top is unique. Everybody say unique. And then everybody say Himalaya. Mm, that's a big word. So let's try it again. Him, a, le, ya. There's four syllables when you break it down. Himalaya. All right. So as we travel through India, we're going to see many, many, many different people, it says. There are over one billion people living in India. Can you guys believe that? One billion. We haven't even got to that. So that's a lot of people. The cities in India are like the cities in America. They are big and they're busy. So just like Los Angeles, they have cities that are big and busy in India as well. There are many unique animals that live in India. Oh, that was one of our key words, unique. And then in our country, we would have to go to a zoo to see these animals. But in India, they have these animals everywhere. Okay, so you see the animals down there at the bottom. So most Indian people, these are coming from my notes, they don't have cars. They either walk or they take public transportation like a, a train or a bus but they usually just walk, so they don't have cars. So a lot, of, a lot of people, there's a billion people. If you had a billion people and everybody had a car, the traffic would be crazy. Uh, we here in California, and especially here in Los Angeles, everybody complains about the traffic, but we have nothing compared on traffic, uh, compared to India, all right? Many places in India, they had poor roads. So if you had a car, even if you were driving, the roads would not be good. So it's almost, Almost better not to have a car because you probably have to pay to keep getting your car fixed if you drove on a road that was really bumpy and difficult. So people travel by the bus or the train if they have to make a long trip. The types of food that they eat is called curry. All right, curry is a spicy meat and food and uh, seafood, vegetables, and they cook it in a spicy sauce. Who of you like spicy? I don't even know if some of you have had spicy food yet, but spicy food is a really, really big thing and popular thing in India. And then I'm looking at my food. It says it's called chutney. Everybody say chutney. This is a type of little small relish, relish like you put on a hot dog, like the pickles, but they put it on their spices and they put it on their fruits. So the chutney actually is something they put on their bananas, their oranges, their apples. It spices up their fruits. So in India, I would say they eat a lot of spicy food. I like some spicy food, but I don't want too spicy. All right. And then let's look at the bottom. You see the two pictures down at the bottom on your page? One of those animals is called a snow leopard. Everybody say snow leopard. Isn't that pretty cool? A snow leopard can be found there, but we don't have snow leopards in America. So they're only in India. Snow leopards, the only thing that they can't do like other big cats, they don't roar. So they make noise, they have sounds, but they don't have a big roar like a lion, like roar, like tigers and leopards. They don't even do that, all right? And then the other tiger, see how big, see how strong and sitting, has great posture. That is called a Royal Bengal Tiger. And guess what? It's so special that it is India's national animal. So that is a very special animal in India. You cannot touch it. They, they will actually take you to jail and do uh, prosecute you in court for trying to harm the animal. You see how beautiful it looks? That's just a picture, and it looks extremely beautiful. All right, let's look at the top of page 95. When we leave India, we may have to fly over the Himalaya Mountains. These are some of the highest mountains in the world. They separate India from China, and that's the next country we're going to visit. So the Himalaya Mountains, look at those people down there. They're walking down there. Would you like to go? I'd like to go. I think, I think that'd be pretty fun. I get a lot of cool pictures. And guess what? We've been talking about mountains because in the last country in Kenya, didn't we talk about Mount Kilimanjaro? That was a big country, a big uh, syllable word. So these are the Himalayas, all right? It was, uh, they have a, I'm sorry, I'm reading something as well I want to tell you. I forgot to tell you. There's a place in India that is very, 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 very special. It's a beautiful, beautiful tomb, and it was built over 400 years ago, all right? It's called the Taj Mahal. And if you don't know what that says, all right, I'm going to write it at the top. It's T. It's like a special temple, and a lot of people from all over the world will travel to it, okay? It is considered to be one of the most famous and most beautiful buildings in America. The pyramids in Egypt and the Taj Mahal are one of the seven great wonders of the world. So these are things that were built that people, they would, they would pay thousands of dollars to go see because they're so special, they're so incredible that you just have to go see them in person. So hopefully one day you're able to see. All right, next place we're going, China. All right, now, so we're on page 96, and we're going to look at the top, the, uh, the top uh, vocabulary word. The first one, we're going to say Mount Everest. Everybody say Mount 
Everest. And then we're going to say countryside. Everybody say countryside. Then say enemies. Ooh, that's a tough word. And then the next one is bamboo. All right, pretty cool. So we're going to be reading here. It says, as we fly over the Himalaya mountains in the China, we just came from India, you may see Mount Everest, which is the tallest mountain in the world. Wait a minute, we've mentioned three different mountains, Mount Kilimanjaro, the Himalayas, and now we have Mount Everest. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world. More people live in China than in any other country in the world. And most of these people, Chinese people live in the countryside. Many people are farmers who grow rice. Rice is one of the main foods in China. You know what's crazy, guys? When we're looking at things that we see here, we see Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. And then they just said in India, there was over a billion people that live in India. Well, if there's a billion people that live in India and China has the most people in the world, how many people do you think live in China? Well, I wanted to give you guys a second, second to answer. There's almost 1.5 billion people in China. Wow. That is amazing. There's so many people in China. It's just absolutely crazy. So that's a lot of people. Well, I'm going to tell you some of, some of the information about these people. Most of the people that live in the country, they're actually really poor. There's so many people in China that not enough jobs are there for everyone. So most of the people are farmers. Some people live in cities, and one of the biggest cities is the capital. It's called Beijing. Everybody say Beijing. All right. The people that live in the city of Beijing, they live in apartments and they live in houseboats. So even then, they live differently than we do in America. Not everybody has a big house or an apartment. They live in small apartments and then houseboats, so boats that are on the water. There are a few cars because there's so many people. If you had over 1.5 billion people driving, nobody would be able to get anywhere. So people, guess what they do? They ride their bike for exercise. They actually take the bus or they take the train, but there's still a lot of people out there. One of the best things that happens in China is they try to save on a lot of equipment they use for eating food and doing things. So we use silverware. Over in China, they actually use chopsticks. Chopsticks are two little sticks. I don't have any right here, but you take the two sticks and you're gonna be eating the food and you use them and you pick up the food and eat it with that. It takes a lot of practice. I would ask you to practice right now because if you practice when you're young, when you're older, you won't have any issues. Mr. Hunter, I still have issues. I can't do it that great, but you would be pretty good. And then also, you know what else they do? They have writing in school. They do characters. They read books from left to right, just like we do. And then they also have a big, huge celebration for New Year's. So you know how we have New Year's night and everybody goes out. Some people go to church in China. It's one of the biggest celebrations of the year. And it's really, really, really cool. So I have a question for you. All right. What continent are China and India located? China is not a continent. Remember, it's a country. And I'll give you a hint. Starts with an A. Did you say Asia? You're right, Asia. So what else? In China, they don't use silverware like forks and knives like we do. They use something else. What do they use? Not a pencil. They use chopsticks, all right? They use chopsticks. And then guess what? What happens during the New Year's celebration? everyone turns a year older. It's something that they do in China on that day. So they turn and turn their New Year celebration, everyone turns a year older. They celebrate everyone at that time. All right, let's look at page 97. It says, we will enjoy, in China, we will enjoy seeing the Great Wall of China. I'm gonna show you guys a video of what that looks like because it's pretty amazing. It's nothing like it. The Chinese built this wall many years ago to keep their enemies from coming into the land. It was built as protection. But now it serves as a tourist attraction. Many people all over the world travel to walk on the Great Wall and to see it in person. There is an animal that we hope to see while we are in China, even after you go to the Great Wall, because China is home to the home, China is the home of the giant panda. All right, these beautiful animals live in the bamboo forest there. Those are our words, bamboo. And there, there are not many pandas left because there are not as many bamboo forests as there used to be. Pandas that we might see in the zoo in the United States, guess where they came from? They all came from China. So that's pretty amazing. That panda right there looks almost so real, looks beautiful, and he's chewing on the bamboo sticks. But if the bamboo forests go away and the bamboo sticks go away, will the, bam will, the, uh, will the pandas have anything to eat or places to live? No, so it's good we have to protect our homes for the animals as well, all right? The Great, Wild, the Great Wall of China, here's a couple of facts for you. The Great Wall of China is so big, it can be seen from outer space. They can look down and see the entire Great Wall of China. 
All right. If you were to take the Great Wall of China and you were to stretch it out all across the United States and dangle it and put it in the oceans, guess what? The entire Great Wall of China would reach across the entire United States. It would go into the Pacific Ocean and it would go into the Atlantic Ocean. Isn't that amazing? That's how big the Wall of China is. Wow. All right. Giant pandas, they live in bamboo forests, like we mentioned, and there's not many left. And all those pandas that we have in America, the LA Zoo, the San Diego Zoo, they all came from China. And then last but not least, you're not going to get off the hook without any questions. So I hope you're paying attention. What animal lives in the bamboo forest of China? If you said the panda, that's great, but it's wrong because it's the giant panda. So remember to say the giant panda. Okay. And then what did the Chinese, why did the Chinese um, build this great wall? They built the great wall because what? Maybe I'll ask you the question like this. What did the Chinese build to keep their enemies away? The great wall. Okay. And they built the wall to keep their enemies away when they're in war and to keep their, keep their, uh, their country safe from anybody that wanted to harm them. Okay, so we learned a lot of words today. We learned how to say even um, with the word uh, shalom was goodbye and hello and uh, when you're talking over in Israel. Well, in China, if you want to say hello to somebody, you're going to say like this, ni hao. But in China, they actually bow their head when they say it. Ni hao, that's a sign of respect. So if I see you, I say ni hao. And how do you spell ni hao? Well, I'll show you right there. All right, ni hao in Chinese means hello. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.